Instead of a blender, like many people make, make a soup with a blender. So before I get into the juicing, I want to really quickly explain the juicers and the different styles for you. How many guys in here already own a juicer? It's like almost everybody, there's a few people that don't. So there's different styles of juicers, much like the ladies out there may have, you know, 20 pairs of shoes and you each have a different pair of shoes for a different occasion. Like if you're going to go to the beach here and swim, you're probably going to wear your sandals and you're going to wear high heel pumps or whatever, because that's not going to be too effective. And for me, that's how I look at juicers. Juicers, for me, are just simply tools that allow me to get more fruits and vegetables in me, and that's why I think they're one of the most beneficial kitchen gadgets you can own, as well as I like blenders too, because they also let you get more fruits and vegetables in you, but not quite, in my opinion, as well as juicers do. So the main difference between the blenders and the juicers are that the juicers separate out the insoluble fiber, but keep the soluble fiber, whereas the blender keeps the soluble and insoluble fiber together. And there's pros and cons of this, you know, some people believe strongly in a whole foods, plant-based diet, which I do, and they believe we should eat all our foods in their whole state without taking out any fiber. You know, I think that if we lived like 200 years ago where we didn't have all this environmental pollution and toxins and we had actually good quality, good nutritious food with, you know, full trace minerals and, you know, probiotics and, amino acids and uh, phytochemicals and phytonutrients, you know, we probably wouldn't maybe need to juice as much as we do today, but the fact of the matter is, in my other talk I gave uh, two days ago, you know, I stated that, you know, the majority of the produce grown today is, has declined significantly since like the 1920s or the 1950s, and foods have less nutrition now than they ever did in history, and it ain't getting better. So this is why, you know, in the, maybe in the 1950s you could eat one apple and today you'll need to eat like four apples to get the same amount of nutrition, you know, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals out of that apple. And so that's why I like juicing because juicing will allow you to take five pounds of carrots that you wouldn't normally eat in nature, granted, um, and run it through the juicer and give you literally five, four to five cups of carrot juice, which is basically the nutrition out of the carrot less the um, insoluble fiber. And the insoluble fiber is kind of what keeps us regular, keeps us moving, and it is very important. And by no means do I advocate living on any kind of <coughs> juice or liquid diet. You know, I like to juice once a day, get some good nutrition in me, get the soluble fiber in me from the juices from the liquid that I'm drinking, but I eat also, you know, plenty of fruits that have <coughs> high fiber as well as like salads and things that have a lot of fiber every other time of the day. You know, the problem with most Americans today is that they're simply not eating enough fiber because they're eating highly processed foods and animal foods, you know, that have minimal fiber. So even juicing has more fiber than animal foods, you know, no doubt, because there's zero fiber in animal foods and a lot of processed foods have very, you know, low fiber as well. So um, that's the difference. It keeps the fiber, all the fiber. This only keeps, you know, half the fiber. And the other difference is the speed at, they op at which they operate. And that's very important to me as I go on in my years and my raw foods journey. I've been into this now for 20 years. And you know, I started with a juicer similar to this. This is a centrifugal ejection style machine. And this is what's available at most department stores and what's most widely available when you ask for a juicer somewhere. They're gonna say, hey, we got one of these guys. Whether it's the BMJ 330 model like this, whether that's the Breville, whether that's the Jack Lane, you know, whether that's the Juice Man, you know, they're all pretty much this style and how they work, they work at very high RPMs, um, generally around 10,000 plus RPMs. And there's a really fast spinning blade inside here that spins around very fast and it's like when you grate carrots, you know, for your salad, um, this actually is a micro grater. So it micro grates them, it uh, takes off some of the fiber and then also at the same time the juice is released and the juice is flung through this screen through centrifugal action and then the pulp is ejected out. So this very this happens at very high speed, and one of the things you know I've learned is that you know things that happen at high speed not necessarily uh, good. The other thing that happens at high speed, and let me go ahead and turn this on. There it is. You notice that actually that's fairly loud. I have to raise my voice so you guys can hear me over it. 
it's a defective also because you gotta push on it right here to make it work. Um, but it runs at high speed, so basically the higher the speed of the blender or the juicer, the more oxidative damage you're gonna do to the produce. So for example, the Vitamix runs in excess of 20,000 revolutions per minute. This runs in excess of 10,000 revolutions per minute. And the juicers here, uh, these run at about um, under 100 RPM, so like 80 RPMs, and this is run, running at like 125, 150 RPMs. So significantly slower. So, you know, people don't understand like, oh yeah, the people they want to eat, have you eat whole foods, which is great, I encourage whole foods, and using our best blenders and juicers in the world, which is our teeth, and we should chew every mouthful of food into a mush, like, so if you see me in the dining hall, like I'm usually one of the last people to finish because I'm sitting there chewing it. I mean, that's why we give babies baby food because they don't have teeth. We need to mush it up for them. But we should mush every, every morsel of food into a mush so we get optimal digestion. And the blenders do that, but the problem with that is that our teeth run at very low and slow RPMs. And the blender runs very high. So when you put something in the blender, you create that vortex and it sucks things in. And as you're creating that vortex, that vortex is like a little miniature tornado. You know, tornadoes, if you live in Kansas, will come down and pull up houses like in the Wizard of Oz and deposit them somewhere else, and they're very <laughs> destructive. And likewise in the blender, you know, that action of, of that uh, vortex basically aerating your food is causing damage. Now, you're not probably gonna lose any like trace minerals or anything like that, because that can't really be affected, but what you will lose is probably one of the most important properties in the food, in my opinion, and it's the phytochemicals and phytonutrients. And there's a published study that was published, I believe, the last, in, la, in the last year. And they did a study between uh, basically blended broccoli, high-speed broccoli, and low-speed juiced broccoli. And what this study found is that in test tubes, uh, they put cancer cells in test tubes and put each of the juices made with the different devices in the test tube or in the petri dish or whatever. And the study showed that the the cancer fighting ability from the blended and the high speed juice was 50% less than from the low speed juicer. So after this study came out, I'm like, man, I really got to work on not blending my foods as much, especially, you know, high antioxidant rich and high phytochemical rich foods, because I don't want to destroy the cancer fighting ability because, you know, I want to live disease free, whether it's cancer or anything else. It's the phytonutrients and phytochemicals that are chemicals that are super important for us. I mean, a lot of people here may stress calories. You need to eat calories, 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 and eat bananas and dates and eat all these things. And that's great. Those are high calorie foods, but they're really low nutrient foods. And you know, as you guys you know mature in age and are not a youngster anymore, this becomes more and more important. I wish more younger people were in here to hear this message, and they would at least focus more on the phytochemical rich foods and you know try to you know decrease the amount of you know, calories you're eating and increase the amount of phytonutrients that they're eating because these are disease protective, anti-aging, they're gonna keep you younger longer and living disease free. And you know, while bananas and dates are you know, higher calorie foods with lower nutrition, they're still plant foods, they're still really great. But you know, there's a lot of studies out that show things like the broccoli family of plants, the cruciferous family of plants, the onion family of plants, anti-cancer. And in some schools, a thought here, even at the fruit festival, you know, these foods are excluded because they're toxins. So another thing for me that's very important is like, I don't like to see things as right and wrong. Oh, high carbohydrates or, you know, or bananas and dates are bad and, you know, eating greens is good or whatever, you know, it's always a gradient, you know, are onions and garlic super bad and super toxic or are they super good? Well, I don't make meals out of onions and garlic, I may add a few, you know, onions, sweet onions and garlic in my meals once a week, a couple times a week, you know, and eat them sometimes. So there's always a gradient. It's never right and wrong, never good and bad. There's always, it's just like shades of gray, great gradients, right? So I want everybody to kind of not like be so extremes <laughs> in our diet, you know. And so uh, that's why I like the slow juicers and these, those are the ones on this side. I'll go ahead and introduce them. These are kind of some old, well, that's the current model, but these are older models. Um, well, this is the Vitamix, of course, and I do recommend, if you do want to get a blender, the Vitamix is the number one brand of blender you want to get. The brand new model is the Vitamix 7500, and the 7500, they made it a little bit, um, they made, instead of a tall craft, they made it a little bit shorter, so that's nice, it fits into your counters. Also, I find because it is shorter, it actually has a wider base where things are blended, so, you know, it, it blends a little bit quicker, it has a larger blade, uh, I like that, and then also, it's uh, quieter, the base, they've, uh, 
basically made more sound dampening in there. So that's the latest model, the Vitamix that I'd recommend. This is the Omega BMJ 330 high speed juicer. You know, unless you're just not going to juice, unless you could do it super quick, I don't really recommend these. Of course, I think some juicing, even if it's at high, at high speed, is better than no juicing at all for many people. You know, instead of drinking a coffee, a tea, a coke, a pasteurized juice, make some high speed juice. But I really encourage everybody that's serious about their health to get a low speed juicer like one of these guys. This is the Omega 8006 style machine. The latest models of these are the uh, Solo Star 4 and the Omega NC800. I do have a test comparing those two machines side by side. And the horizontal style auger, how these work, as I explained the other one, is basically there's a slow running auger that uh, turns around and as the auger turns around it chunks off a piece of the produce and it's smushed into a smaller and smaller space until literally they squeeze out the juice out of the pressing screen here on stage two and then on the initial crush the juice comes out the bottom uh, screen right here which is stage one. So on the auger, does that wear out after a while? So the auger is a non-wearing part. The blade on the juicer is a wearing part. This should not wear out. I mean there will be some small scratches on this but it doesn't really wear out to you know to my knowledge. We do see challenges with the screens and it breaking over time, but this machine has a 10-year warranty, so if, it, if the screen does break due to no fault of your own, you didn't put it down the garbage disposal, you didn't drop it or anything, they're replacing it under warranty. And the newer version of this does have a 15-year warranty. So this style machine, you know, every style machine, much like the analogy of ladies' shoes and going to the beach or going to a wedding or going running, each juicer specializes in certain produce items. So real quick, this juicer is best at like hard vegetables. So things like carrots and beets, it'll create a high yield. Nonetheless, the high yield is at the cost of the nutrient quality. Uh, this one actually will juice the carrots and the beets. The challenge is it doesn't make as high a yield as that one, but this one really shines if you want to juice things like wheatgrass and sprouts and leafy greens. Uh, this does really the best. Also, this one's the simplest juicer on the whole table to clean. It takes me about a minute and a half, under two minutes to clean it. Uh, this juicer really just doesn't really juice fruits too well. So if you want to juice like a lot of fruits, it's not going to work if you're juicing fruits alone. Now, if you're juicing like fruits with like uh, vegetables, like hard vegetables, it's going to work great. So for example, trying to juice straight pineapple in this machine, you're going to pull your hat out and you're going to cuss me out. But if you just juice pineapple with a piece of carrot, pineapple, carrot, pineapple, carrot, rotate it, that hard carrot fiber consistency push that soft pineapple through the machine so it's going to work fine for you. Now the next one here, this is called a vertical single auger juicer and this works the same as that principle or the horizontal but this auger is going up and down and once again this auger just turns, it bites off a piece of the produce, it compresses the space and it squeezes out the juice and the juice comes out one side and the fiber comes out the other side. And this is my current favorite style of juicer for me and for what I juice, I tend to juice like a lot of leaky beans and um, I juice some carrots, a lot of celery. Also I juice fruits, you know, a lot too. And so this one works on like the widest range of produce. It'll juice fruits to leafy greens to carrots and it's an all around good performer. This model is the older model, it's the Omega uh, VRT350. They now have the Omega VSJ843, which is a newer model that works significantly better than this model. Runs at a lower RPM, has a 15 year warranty. The other model that I really like the most, that's the best on the um, earth that I've tested, besides the Omega VRT843, is the Slow Star Juicer by Tribest. So that offers additional value over this uh, VRT because it also offers you uh, the ability to homogenize and make like the banana sorbet that you guys like had for lunch today. It also allows you to uh, make nut butters and I've made even things like salsa, just putting through whole tomatoes and, and mushing it up into like a nice salsa, super simple, super easy. And so yeah, this is the most versatile. This takes me a little bit longer to clean. It takes me about three minutes to clean this. And, um, and, and they're really easy to use. Like on this machine, you gotta like, there's a small feed chute. The feed chute size is uh, about one and a half inches in, in diameter. And you gotta put things in there, and each item you put in there, you gotta actually push down into the auger to be accepted. The thing about this machine I like is that you should really virtually throw away the pusher on this machine. You shouldn't use a pusher because if you're pushing produce into this machine, you're pushing it too fast. Because it's a vertical auger, gravity will just pull the produce into there at the speed it wants to take it. 
and self feed and I'll demonstrate that in a minute when I just put carrots in and just sucks it in. So I can worry about chopping and cutting things and putting it in and it just sucks it in without me having to sit there and push each thing through. Now the last kind of juicer, you know, I like to say that there's benefits to each and every juicer on the market. This is the Green Star Elite GSE 5000 and this is known as a twin gear juicer. And uh, how this works is basically like for those of you guys that are like have ever worked on a car, uh, these are like two gears like inside of an automotive transmission. And basically, you put the produce through here, and it basically crushes and squeezes the produce right through here. So this is most similar to like maybe like a Norwalk where it's like crushing and squeezing. And this actually has three distinct stages. Number one, it has the crushing stage where it literally crushes the produce. And yes, if you're juicing carrots through this machine and it does take some downward strength because you're literally crushing and pushing the carrots into these gears that are then as it comes around it kind of chunks it off but there's not it's not really sharp you know I can't really cut myself so it does take some strength so if you have like arthritis or older I don't recommend this kind um, but it crushes it up as a first stage here the second stage on these plastic nylon BPA free gears are is a mixing stage so this, they try to emulate what the Norwalk does, where the Norwalk triturates and crushes everything up, and then it actually mixes when you're sitting the produce in the bag before you press it, which is this stage, and then finally this last stage um, on the nylon gears, it's actually pressing out all the juice uh, through the screen, and then it makes the juice there. So this machine, it's not good at juicing fruits, so if you want to juice for straight fruits, forget about it, you're going to pull your hair out like I did one time at my friend's house when I was trying to do straight pineapple. But then if I did pineapple with hard, mature coconut meat, then it worked better because the coconut meat added that fiber to help push the, uh, you know, the, the soft pineapple pulp through the machine. And so this machine works really well on the hard vegetables. It's really designed for hard vegetables. It, it, it basically is the best at that. And also it's really good for uh, hard vegetables and leafy greens at the same time. Now this will also juice leafy greens, but if you do juice leafy greens by themselves, uh, in the Green Star juicer, it does make it, uh, you know, a little bit uh, foamy, more foamy than, say, that machine. So it's very important that you get the right machine for your specific needs and what you specifically want to juice, because everybody has a different idea of what juicing is. And if you're not really sure, that's why I recommend the vertical single auger, because that kind of does it all. The other thing about the Green Star is that this machine, of all the juicers on the market, including the Norwalk, in my opinion, creates the highest quality juice with the most minerals and most phytochemicals and phytonutrients due to the design because it runs at a low RPM because it does have some magnetic and far infrared technology in there and they, they have run and conducted tests on this on the nutrients that you get from using the Green Star as well as a 72 hour juice stability test on how the juice could stay fresher longer for up to 72 hours when you use this machine with their technology. Now it's quite sad that other manufacturers, if we like pick up one of the boxes over there, it'll probably say any, any one of these slow juices will say, oh yeah, store your juice up to 72 hours or three days, but there's no documentation they have. They just say, oh, the other company with the slow juicer made this documentation, so we're just going to copy them. So if you want to store your juice, use this. If you, if you have a disease that you're trying to, you know, uh, work through, I would recommend, you know, just getting the best juicer with the, with the highest quality juice because that may make a difference in, you know, uh, how things go for you. The other thing I like about the Green Star is that it has a long 12 year warranty and the thing I don't like about it the most is actually that it's a pain in the butt to clean. It's one of the hardest juices to clean. There's all these little nooks and crannies and I think they should really make it better. Juice gets all up and heat through here. You gotta scrub that down every time and there's just a lot of pieces to clean. So even though I own this machine and I know it makes the highest quality juice, you know, and, and highest yield when juicing, you know, hard vegetables and leafy greens, I just simply don't use it because it's, it's hard to clean and I'm just not going to do it. So, you know, you've got to find the juicer you're actually going to use so it benefits you. You also got to light up these gears when you actually uh, put it back into the machine, which is not too difficult and you can learn how to do that. So, uh, let's see. So, those, that was all the different juicers, like the rundown. There's always, they're always coming out with new different models of these styles of juicers and one day I hope there's a new style of juicer out there that dwarfs all these and you know I see myself although I sell juicers at discountjuicers.com I see myself as a user and a consumer advocate because I use these machines day in day out I have you know I, I use all the different ones so I know how they work and I make recommendations to the manufacturers on how to improve them and my goal is to just 
try to bully <laughs> the manufacturers in making a better machine. And I don't care whose machine, whether that's Omega, whether that's Trivest, whether that's Lequip, I don't care who's making the best machine. I want the whole industry as a whole to move forward because when that happens, they make a better machine that runs with lower RPMs, that makes more yield, that you know has more nutrition in there, and then it benefits everybody out there, you know. Um, and that's what I think the power of juicing is. So that's the overall rundown of the machines. The next thing I want to do is get into some juicing and show you guys how that works. If you guys have never seen it before, I'm going to go ahead and use my favorite vertical style juicer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just quickly reset the table to get rid of some of the appliances that I won't need and then bring over uh, some of the things that we'll be juicing today. And this is a real treat in the Woodstock. They're not serving any juice, so you guys are going to get a little, at least a little sample of juice from what I make here. Sure, so the question is, some people will blend their greens with water in the blender and then strain it out with a nut milk bag. So is that the same as juicing? So, um, yeah, somebody's shaking their head and hope. So if you hear, heard me talk earlier, you know, when you blend things um, and basically you're, you're doing more oxidative damage to the phytochemicals and phytonutrients in there. So in the, in the test that I uh, shared with you guys earlier, there's 50% less cancer fighting ability in things that have been blended versus things that have been slow juiced, not fast juiced. And in addition, you're diluting your greens with water. So, you know, I want the liquid living water, the life force, and all the phytochemicals and phytonutrients from the greens, and I don't want to dilute it. So, in my opinion, it's definitely not the same. Now, is blending water with some kale and straining it out better than a coffee, a tea, a soda, you know, a canned and bottled juices that have been pasteurized? Absolutely. But I always want to encourage everybody to do the best. One of the principles I teach is good, better, best. And do the best you can. And if you just got a $15 blender from Walmart and you got a strainer bag and you don't have a juicer, hey, that's way better than not doing it, right? But if you could afford it, get a slow juicer because you're going to get the best results, in my opinion. And I see a lot of people do that all the time. And I don't, I'm going to make a video on, you know, with, go into more detail on why that's really, really, really not a good idea, in my opinion. Also, I mean, one of the reasons for juicing for me that I also mentioned earlier is because, you know, now I could, you know, eat more kale or eat more carrots than I would have eaten by, you know, juicing it and just getting out the liquid. But when you do that, you're adding more liquid, so that's going to, it's going to lower the amount of greens or anything you're eating because now it's like, you know, a lot of water. So the current model, you said there's a newer model of this? Right, so the current model of, the, of this guy is the Omega VXJ843. VXJ843 or the slow star juicer. And those are the two that I recommend of the vertical style machines at this time. And I do have videos on youtube.com slash raw foods comparing those two styles against each other. I did a recent test actually the night before I flew out here to Woodstock where I actually juiced um, carrots and celery and some greens in both machines. And the VSJ actually made 4% more juice but it took 27% longer to make because the motor is not as powerful and I had to like fuss with the switch on and off to reverse it and to keep it going. Once again, every juicer has its pros and cons. So what I'll be juicing for you guys today is the best of the organic produce that they have from the kitchen because not everything they're serving here is organic, unfortunately, but I've selected only the organic things because that's what I want to eat and hopefully that's what you guys want to eat. So what we're going to juice today is actually, uh, we're gonna do some uh, organic green kale. We got some romaine hearts so we can get more greens in us. You know, one of the main advantages of juicing for me is that it allows me to eat more greens. You know, my goal every day is to eat two pounds of leafy greens because they are so nutritious for us and so good for us. And not just eat kale every day or eat romaine hearts every day, but have different varieties of greens. You know, some people can eat spinach and juice. Oh, my, I make the mean green juice every day or I make, you know, the lemon ginger blast and like, those juices, although they're great, if you get into the habit of doing that day in, day out, you're gonna get all the nutrients from those foods, but you're missing out on the nutrients from other foods, as well as you may be accumulating toxins that the foods you know, accumulated. So for example, like I know in California, there's a recent thing with kale, with organic kale. These ladies were like blending organic kale into like a kale smoothie and they were basically getting like an overdose of a, of, a, of a heavy metal, I believe it was lithium, and then getting like, you know, chronic fatigue-like symptoms. And then just because they're eating organic kale every day, because kale's so good for you, man. Well, as good as kale is, you know, there's a lot of other vegetables, spinach and radicchio and dandelion greens and Egyptian spinach and ashitaba and, 
you know, juice some parsley. Those are all great too, and everything has different nutrients. So you, I really and strongly encourage you guys to rotate as many different greens in as you can. And one of the greatest greens in the world are uh, wild greens. So if you don't spray your lawn, every grass is edible. You can juice some of your grass, dandelion leaves, you know, uh, chickweed, lamb's quarters, purslane. These are incredible things that you have available for free outside your door if you're not spraying and whatnot that I would encourage people to actually include, you know, not in any large volumes because they can be very strong, but like what I like to do, for example, is if I'm harvesting some like wild greens, I'll harvest some wild greens and then I'll juice it with like, you know, a bunch of romaine hearts or like some celery and some cucumbers and just a, a few wild greens because it's not about, you know, eating a ton because those are good for you. It's you know about eating a little bit here and there and also having it palatable because some of them taste pretty strong as well. So anyways, today we're gonna juice the kale, organic uh, romaine hearts. We also have some um, cucumbers that actually we peel the skin on because uh, the thing is a uh, standard cucumbers, the skin can be very bitter and then when you juice that, that goes into your glass and it makes your glass, uh, the juice bitter. And so I don't really like that a lot, but there are nutrients in the skin that, that we're not getting when we do this. Um, so actually, instead of just getting the standard normal cucumbers, I mean, I grow my own cucumbers, like Armenian cucumbers and lemon cucumbers. And I like to get the Persian cucumbers that are smaller cucumbers that actually don't have a bitter skin. Also the hothouse grown English cucumbers that you could buy in the store. I prefer those over the standard cucumbers because they don't have a bitter skin either. And you could get the chlorophyll from the skin of the cucumber. If you're getting one of those English cucumbers, they're not organic. Is there a special way that you soak them or clean them? Or sure. So the question is, is there a special way where I soak or clean the hothouse grown cucumber? So you can get hothouse grown organic cucumbers some places in the country. I'm not sure about where you live, but the other thing about the hothouse or the English cucumbers, they're wrapped in plastic. Oftentimes, those cucumbers are not grown in the field. More likely than not, they're actually grown in greenhouses. So, uh, you know, things grown in greenhouses are less likely to be sprayed with pesticides and herbicides because it's in a pretty controlled environment. And I've verified some companies out there um, that actually grow in hothouses and, you know, they have, they use more IPM or integrated pest management, which means they're going to have less sprays and toxins on there. And so you just got to check out the growers, like the growers I trust, I think. Um, can't, can't think of any right now, but um, I have videos on this topic. So I do buy some hothouse stuff. And then I would just wash it, you know. For me personally, I just wash my produce under water. I mean, I eat 95%, 90 to 95% plus organic. There'll be some things like I'll get hothouse cucumbers in the wintertime when I'm not growing my own to eat, you know. And I'll eat like non-organic, you know, avocados and non-organic mangoes and stuff. But I always encourage everybody to buy organic whenever you can. Not only because in, in most cases, but not all, it'll be more nutritious, but also you're avoiding the toxic pesticides and chemicals and things and coatings they put on the food these days. Not so, to mention uh, saving the environment. Yeah, no, yeah, not to mention saving the environment as well and, and doing right by the planet. But if there was something that wasn't organic, how would you just regular water? I mean, if you have to. Yeah, so the thing I would do is uh, I would use like maybe like a salt, water, vinegar solution. It's probably what I do to wash it off as a free and cheap and inexpensive way to clean that off. And like I probably soak it and then uh, and then wash it. So the other thing we're going to juice are some organic local carrots, and I think that's all we have. Oh, and some uh, organic apples. So the green apples here are organic. So it's very important when juicing in any juicer to rotate the produce you're putting through. Don't just put like all the kale through, then all the apples through, and then all the cucumbers through. You're gonna put like bits and pieces of each thing, uh, you know, at a time. Has that stuff are being washed? So this is organic, and actually I did not have time to wash this, so if you are concerned with that, do not drink the juice that I'll be handing out. You know, I mean, just talking about washing your produce, like if I grew things out of my garden, like I would, I would just totally not wash it if there was like no like chemtrail planes or jet planes flying overhead. Um, and I know how my things are grown and I'm handling my food and nobody else is picking it for me. 
Um, in industry, you know, they over sterilize things, and that's a good thing and it's a bad thing that's going to prevent contamination of bacterial outbreaks. But it also reduces beneficial microbial populations on the foods, and you know, more than more, the majority of our body is actually bacteria and not human. And it's my opinion that we need these bacteria in us. Now everybody needs to have their own ratio of like what they want to wash and what they don't want to wash. I try not to wash things if it's relatively clean and it's safe and I haven't gotten sick from it before. And that's all I'm going to pretty much say about that. Because <laughs> that's a whole debate unto itself. So we're just going to chop off, the, I like to chop off the tops and the bottoms of the carrots and just chop up the cucumbers just so that they fit and cut up the apples into pieces. Now the cool thing is the newer vertical single arter juicers like I've tested, you know, you could do a minimal cutting, the older style machines, um, you know, they do tend to clog more if you don't cut the produce, especially things like the kale and the, kit, the hard kale stem and celery. So for these guys, we're going to actually have to cut these guys and I usually like to cut the bottom of the stems off that are kind of funky. And then we'll just go down and I like to snip off or cut off like, cut it into like, I don't know, eighth inch to quarter inch pieces. Alright, so once we got that all prepared, all our produce set, we're just going to go ahead and turn the machine on and just uh, rotate things. So I like to put the softest things in first and then follow them by a little bit harder textures. So for example, like the apples are like super soft and then maybe, I don't know, we can put some uh, romaine lettuce in there that's kind of soft too. And then we'll maybe do like a handful of the kale here. Follow that with the, some, some cucumber. And then always follow everything with something like a carrot or chopped up celery to really help push the, uh, the produce through there. So I guess while I'm juicing, since this will take me a little bit, uh, do you guys have any questions? Yes, in the back. Um, with the authors and the juicers, except for the green star, they're all plastic. What are the odds if I'm juicing like, uh, if I'm making a green juice and I'm cutting out a ginger root and putting it in there, uh, what, how do we know that none of the plastic residue is aggregated in the juice over a long period of time? Sure, so the question is regarding the plastic and the augers and how do you know the residues are not getting into the, into the juice over a long period of time. So I have seen studies on the juicers as to the bisphenol A and they tested BPA in the juice. They ran a lot of tests and there's no bisphenol A in the juice. That's not to say there's other things that are getting in the juice, but in general the augers in the juicers and the single auger juicers are very hard, kind of like, I don't want to say inert plastic, but you know like the, the plastic that's on the milk jug is a very soft plastic, more pliable, and it's more likely like to take plastic in those you know, cheap one gallon water bottles that you do taste plastic in. Right. Then like the auger that's super hard, because if it's too soft, it would break. And it wouldn't be good. So I think there, you know, you're, you're gonna get minimal if any, but that being said, you know, it is a concern. It is one of my concerns personally. And the thing for me that I like to think is good, better, best. You know, for me, it's far better to juice, even if it's in a plastic juicer, right. you know, than to not juice and not get the I mean, I've looked at my augers and I don't really see any wear on the augers. I mean, I would think that the augers over time would actually, you know, like off gas if they're off gassing or release anything less because all the stuff that's going to come out is come out, you know, much like carpets, you know, right when you get a new carpet or a new plastic item, it smells like plastic or a new car smell that goes away over time, right? right. That would be kind of my opinion on that. If that concerns you know that there are like the Green Star Elite that I just put away has, you know, stainless steel augers up to a point, then nylon, and then there are uh, another stainless steel juicer known as the Angel that's all stainless steel for those that are really... What kind is that one? It's called the Angel Juicer, and actually I don't sell that model because I had uh, challenges with the integrity of the manufacturer. So no, the Angel Juicer is much like the Green Star Elite Juicer. It's a 
it's a dual gear uh, system. Mm -hmm. Do they sell replacement augers? Can you get them? They do sell replacement augers. They're actually quite expensive, maybe $80 or so. Um, you know, the auger is a part covered under warranty. If you should break it, it's no fault of your own. But if you just want to simply replace it because you think, you know, for whatever reason, they're not going to just send you an auger for free. But yeah, I mean, I personally don't think it's a really big issue. You know, I really hope, and I, I keep pushing the manufacturers to make a juicer with a stainless steel auger and all stainless steel parts, because they can do this. But they always tell me, John, if we did that, it would just cost a lot of money, and most Americans and most people would just not buy it. I mean, they're not going to pay. It. Most people are not going to pay a thousand dollars for a juicer. Vitamix is made in the United States from uh, some four components, and the Vitamix. Now the Omega juicers, uh, you know, they used to be made in the USA, but now they're all made out of the country. Oh, okay. Yes. What exactly the Excuse me? What exactly the Sure, so the question is what exactly decreases the phytonutrients in the blender? and it's the oxidation process. So the simple example is, if you take this apple, you cut it open, and I can just have it sit here in open air, we got a little bit of wind coming in, that's not that bad. But if I get in like a Tesla Roadster, you know, that's one of the fastest electric cars in the world, holding out the window at 200 miles an hour, it's blasting 200 miles an hour air, and the same apple, you know, I, I just keep it here, this apple's gonna turn a lot browner, that's the oxidation occurring. And so when you're putting things in the Vitamix, actually it runs at over 200 miles per hour inside the jar. So that's just massively inflicting air into all the phytonutrients, which is basically minimizing, you know, their, what they can do. And they're not, then they're not available for you, which is, I think, you know, super important. Now, any other questions? Jam box, I I used to make a... So the question is, does Tribest make a different juicer that's more expensive? So at present time, they've, they've never had a more expensive juicer than the Green Star Elite, and that's their top of the line model at present time. In the back. What's your favorite thing to do with my pulp? The fa my favorite thing to do with my pulp? Well, so my favorite thing to do with my pulp would be to like to feed it to worms. My other favorite thing to do with pulp is actually to feed it to my dog. <laughs> so I usually compost all my pulp because for me, everybody wants to get like the last bit out and you know, you could do that. I mean, I could take this pulp here and let me see if I could squeeze this. I mean, I could barely squeeze a few drops out of it. It's pretty dry. I mean, yeah, you could get some stuff out of there. But that's mostly fiber. Now, if I want fiber, I'm going to eat a whole salad that has the fiber plus the nutrition in there instead of just simply eating fiber. And some people might want to reuse it and actually eat it, put it in a stew or bake with it if you bake or whatever. I just find it like a waste product and I would rather, you know, give it to my worms, give it to my compost pile, or give it to my dog and let them have at it. My dog definitely needs more fiber. And, um, and if I'm going to do something, I'm just going to use new leaves to juice or whatever. But yeah, it's very valuable, and I, I'm, I'm really saddened by the fact that Woodstock this year is actually not composting and all this yeah. magnificent fruit and vegetable scrap waste that could be growing and going and grow new food and preventing climate change by not inappropriately composting in the landfill, uh, and they're not doing that. But I'm just a speaker here, so. Now, when you make your juice, say you make like about a half a gallon worth of green juice, you're going to store it for like two days. Do you put it in smaller containers, you fill it up to the top to avoid oxidation, or do you not? Quickly in a big gallon glass jar, will the air in the jar affect it, or should you fill your juice jar to the top and then seal it? Sure. So, my answer is number one, I don't, I don't make like gallons of juice in one sitting. You know, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to just make as much juice as you need at that time. So I'm gonna juice now, I'm gonna drink all this juice, and if I wanna juice later today or tomorrow, I'll make it today or tomorrow. Because 
you know, just like the blending example, you know, you're oxidizing the nutrients. Once you make the juice, once you separate out the nutrients from these cell walls, then you're, all this is exposed to air and the quality of the juice and the nutrients and the phytochemicals and phytonutrients go down. So one of the examples I like to give is uh, the Juice Man, which is one of my idols and he's my mentor who I learned about juicing from. He worked with Dar Dr. Garnett Cheney at Stanford University healing um, inmates uh, with, of, uh, of ulcers. And they found that if they kept the cabbage juice, and granted they were using a high speed machine, I believe, uh, more than five minutes, then the, the patients wouldn't have the, you know, the, the, the healing effect of the cabbage juice. So it, that's, that's one reason why it's very important for me to make my juice and drink it as soon as possible. And that's what I do 99% of the time if I'm traveling. I travel with the juicer so I can make it while I'm traveling instead of bottling up a whole bunch of juice and taking it with me. Now, if you do want to store your juice, there's good, better, best ways to store your juice. And one of the better ways is actually put it in you know, small bottles or jars overflowing to the brim. A better way to do it is actually get like a wine saver. So I like to use like big you know, glass bottles like that water comes in you know, with a small neck and I'll get the wine saver thing. You put in wine, you could like suck out the air. So it's in a, you know, oxygen deprived environment or vacuum. You could also do the same thing with mason jars and a food saver, um, you know, so that'd be the best way to store it, you know, and in my opinion, then keep it cold for sure. All right, so can somebody tell me what time it is? Cause I'm, I need to be out of here in like an hour. What? Oh my God. So I just got the barely juice free. I was gonna do a whole another cool recipe, but I don't have any more time. Which tell us about it. Blows. What? Tell us about the cool recipe. Sure, yeah, so I was gonna tell you about the cool recipe. Uh, let me go ahead and juice this and we'll actually turn this up. I actually gotta clean it up. Um, it's almost the way over. Right, yeah, it just stopped so that it didn't go over because I saw that. <laughs> so what I was gonna do for my recipe was that I was gonna create a nice uh, raw soup for you guys using the juicer. So many people would just throw tomatoes and throw all the ingredients in the blender, blast it up to high speed, have it run at 200 plus miles an hour, grind it all up, put the fiber in there, put everything in there, and also put a lot of oxidation in there. I was actually gonna use a juicer, so I was gonna actually juice a whole bunch of tomatoes and just get 100% tomato juice, and tomato juice, you know, blended versus, or tomatoes blended versus tomato juice, way different. You could actually see the difference in the color, like the tomato juice would be like a nice dark red, Tomatoes just blended would be like, you know, more like pinkish color because of the, the air and the oxidation. And then I'd take only some of the tomato juice, like maybe half the tomato juice, and then I'd put that in the blender, but the other half I would actually leave out of the blender because you do need some liquids to blend. And then I would probably blend up the tomatoes with some avocados to make a nice creamy soup base. And then once I got the soup base, I might add like some um, taco seasoning in there and maybe some sauerkraut for some flavor and oh the sun-dried tomatoes in there to make it much thicker and then I take that mixture out and then add it back to the juice that I didn't blend up so that this has like more phytonutrients than the ones that I blended so it's kind of like evens it out because I am still blending and then I would actually take and I would chop up romaine and I was actually going to use my really cool spiralizer tool to like spiralize some zucchini in there chop up some bell pepper in there, chop up some uh, mushrooms in there, or some shiitake mushrooms, the best mushrooms to eat raw because other mushrooms do contain mycotoxins that should be cooked before you eat them. Uh, uh, cut up some organic carrots in there, and, uh, and then, yeah, oh yeah, then I'd probably actually juice some hot peppers in there to give it a little bit of fire and, and call, that a, call that a soup. What do you do with that? Um, Pulp? The other container that is filled. The pulp. Can you do add that to a soup? Yeah, you could absolutely add that to soup. As I mentioned earlier, in answer to a gentleman's question, that to me, I mean, this is pretty dry. It's 100% fiber. Instead of using that fiber, I'd rather just use, you know, like uh, you know, another whole head of romaine because this has the fiber plus also still nutrition in there. Like I want to get away from eating extra stuff that's maybe not as nutritious, whether that's bananas and dates or whether that's just fiber with very little nutrition left. Oh. It's good for fiber and if I was a standard American, I would encourage every standard American that's still eating meat and eggs and chicken and fish and cheese to eat that because they need fiber. I get plenty of fiber in my diet on a plant-based, raw fruit and vegetable based diet. So I don't want to waste my time with fiber that doesn't have nutrients. You know, like so real. you actually have it to compost that fiber? 
fiber. Yeah, so I compost my fiber. You can, I, I like to mix it in with my dog's food, so I make him regular food. And then I add a little bit of that so that he has extra fiber, so that's good for him. And then I also like to just, you know, compost that, and then it actually goes in to grow my garden vegetables. Yeah. Yes. Have you traveled with your juicer? Do you check your bag in with the juicer? Or right. Do you, do you take it with you? Right. So the question is, how do you travel with your juicer? So I travel with a vertical single auger juicer, whether it's one like this or the newer model, and I just put it in my carry-on bag. Carry -on. And I, my carry, I, I generally don't check bags because they charge you extra money. We got them really cheap. So, <laughs> so I, um, I just tell like it is. So I, I pack all my clothes and wrap this up in my clothes. So I put like a, uh, like my jeans wrapped around this in my bag, and and then we prepare at the TSA. In uh, lately now, like in the beginning when I used to do this, but after 9/11 they would like always stop me. Nowadays, like they might stop me 50 percent of the time and say, "Hey, what do you got there?" And they want to look at it, so you got to prepare for that. And then of course so I also opt even, out and get a pat down. Uh, so even though it has yeah, so this one is safe to bring on the plane because there are no sharp objects. Okay. Now you might be concerned, like I would never try to bring a Vitamix on the plane on the plane because they may give you a hassle about that. So if you are going to take a blender, you probably will want to check it. Or if you do have a high speed machine with little blades on there, which they might freak out. I mean, it's unfortunate that TSA seems to make up the rules as they go. They don't stick to anything. You know, I've been I've had where it says, you know, in the TSA rules it says you could take plastic knives and they take away my plastic knives. Mm. I'm like, these are plastic knives. Yeah. Like they're for cutting my vegetables. <laughs> but what you can take and they they maybe took away once is butter knives. So a butter knife, like a short little short bladed butter knife, that's good enough to cut through apples, avocados, you know, a lot of things, and they've they've only once taken it without a way and then I'd actually replace it. But they're pretty cool about that usually. What do you think about um, Pascal pressurized? Pascalization HPP. versus pasteurization, sure. HPP. So once again, I always encourage you, freshest is bestest, so fresh juice is better than a pasteurized juice, but the HPP or pascalization, which is what they, they take a raw juice, and a lot of juice bars are doing this these days. They'll take a juice and they'll basically like submerge it, un, you know, I don't know, 20 or 50 or 100 miles underneath the sea level so there's like all this pressure on it and basically that kills all the bacteria in there and organisms so that it could stay fresher not as long as pasteurized juice that's been heated but at least maybe like 30 days a couple weeks depending on the item so i drink hpp juice or hpp coconut water on rare occasion when i get it free and i don't have to pay for it or it's inexpensive mm -hmm. but i don't like to buy that because i want to have the juice fresh you know, of the studies I've seen, it does affect some of the phytochemicals and phytonutrients because it is put under extreme pressure. The cells in the juice like react, and in some cases they can, the nutrients can decrease, and in some instances actually I've seen where the nutrients increase due to the stress. The antioxidants, the, 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 the plant that's still alive has to create antioxidants to protect itself from, from the damage or the pressure. And so that's why I believe, you know, a lot of the coconut waters that are processed under HPP are actually turning red or pink, and they say on the label it's a good thing. I mean, yeah, there may be more antioxidants in there, but it's still, it's not natural, and I try to live more of a natural lifestyle. So once again, good, better, best. If you have HPP juice or, you know, pasteurized juice, the HPP juice is better, but then travel with your juicer so you just make your own fresh juice, because that's the best. I read a, a raw food class that they said the pink coconut water I mean, that's another possibility, so but, I, you know. but so the coconuts in the coconut bottled water, you know, they should just be taking them right off the tree, slicing them, putting them in the bottle and HPP in them. I don't know why they would treat those coconuts if they're going to treat them, then put them in the bottle. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm processed coconut water. I'm talking about when we get the coconut right. Well, I just think that's kind of going bad, personally, and maybe it hasn't been refrigerated. I don't think, I mean, it's, the fact of the matter is they do dip the Thai coconuts in sulfides and fungicides, okay. but, you know, I don't believe that's causing the pink water, personally. Yeah. Yes, in the back. I'm not saying the vitamins, I'm saying, the, I'm saying in one test they tested um, the, you're, get, you're getting less nutrition. I mean, one guy in raw food says you get, you lose 90% when you blend. And I'm not going to say it's that bad, 
What I will say is you will lose more nutrition in the blender than the juicer. Absolutely, I guarantee my life on that. And the test that I saw, they took broccoli and blended it, juiced it in a high speed juicer, and juiced it in a low speed juicer, and the broccoli, and then they took cancer cells, different kinds of, about a handful of cancer cells, a handful of different kinds, in a Petri dish, and they put the, the blended uh, mixture of broccoli, the high speed mixture, high speed juice of broccoli, and the low speed juice of broccoli, and then they looked at it under the microscope and they found that the low speed broccoli juice had 50% more cancer fighting abilities. So, you know, what else is being damaged, I don't know, but that's what one study showed with as a relationship to cancer, but we could surmise that if there's less cancer protection, there's less other phytonutrients and phytochemicals that are <coughs> killing the cancer in this, you know. So if you're using the good, better, best model then, would you say like the good would be eat the vegetables, better, no, sorry, the best would be eat the vegetables, the lower level would be juice it, and I don't know, like. Yeah, sure, what would be my opinion on that? It depends how well you chew, you know. If you chew it into a mush and it's juice consistency when you swallow it, that's the best. I mean, we were given these teeth for a reason to chew everything into a mush. The fact of the matter is most people do not. I mean, it pains me to watch my dad eat because he takes two chews and swallow. And they should be juicing because that'd be way better than him eating. You know, I, I chew pretty effectively, but even then I think that, you know, the juicer, it would probably be, you know, a bit better even. You know, because it really does a good job on extracting all the nutrients out of there, you know. And it separates out the fiber, and the fiber, you know, there are still nutrients in the fiber to some extent, but also fiber could block the absorption of the nutrients. You know, and a lot of people these days, especially after eating years and years and decades of their incorrect foods, have compromised digestive systems. So our body's not meant to, not used to handling all the roughage that we get, especially if you're new into this. And that's why I really think juicing would probably be better than, than chewing in some instances, or in many instances. Yeah, I thought you wanted the fiber, because you're separating it right now. There's pros and cons to the fiber. Now you're keeping all the soluble fiber in the juice, you're getting rid of the uh, insoluble fiber. And we do need insoluble fiber. Now, if you're, like I, I mentioned, you must have came in late. I mentioned earlier, if you're a standard American and eating, you know, cheese, eggs, and milk, and, you know, meats and stuff, it'd probably be good to eat the fiber. But a raw foodist that's eating, you know, a, a good salad a day, you know, a lot of fruits a day, and then if they juice once a day, I, you're still getting enough fiber. You're, you know, so that, that's it. Um, I think I gotta pretty much end now. I'm gonna have juice samples up here if you wanna come and get a juice sample. I don't know how much I'll have for everybody. And then I actually have to clean up because the next speaker is actually gonna be in there real soon. Um, I'm gonna hang out in front. So if you have any other questions, feel free to come up and see me or come up and see me anytime while I'm still at this event for the last, uh, what, three days we have together. Thank you. Today for another exciting episode for you and before we get into the episode I want to remind everybody if you enjoy my videos please support me and my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com. Now today's episode what we're going to do we're going to do a juice off comparison between